huge chair. Yeah, he's a pretty good sized guy. <laughs> you could be. All right, you ready? Ready. Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and this is a spinoff off of Community Conversation. This is our first episode of Coffee with Jesus, and I am here with Mike and Donna Campbell. <laughs> Mike and Donna Campbell. Let's get started. <laughs> All right, Mike and Donna, tell tell the Battle Mountain um, a little bit about yourself and why you're in Battle Mountain, I guess. I don't know, whatever you want to talk about. Hmm. Well, I came down here in 91. I worked for a while security in the Owl Club. Went out and worked security and fueled planes at the airport till I got a job at construction with Ruby Dome. And after Ruby Dome, the day after we left there, I went to work for Sealing Construction. And I'd already had applications in at all the mine. Sealing Construction got finished and I got a phone call the next day asking me if I was gonna get my physical for Echo Bay and I didn't even know I was supposed to go get one. <laughs> but I went and got one and went to work for them. Went to work for, I worked out there for what, seven, seven years. years. And then I, when the mine kind of more or less shut down, then I went driving truck for a while, moving oversized loads. I was used to work in an oil field years and years ago, so I was kind of used to doing that anyway. But I worked for Newmont after that, and I worked for Newmont for 18 years. And then I retired. And I'm enjoying my retirement, but I find myself sometimes wondering if it was a wise thing to do. But all in all, I think it was because I'm doing well. I'm eating, I got roof over my head, and I'm happy. I don't have to put up with a lot of politics. Uh, I actually am enjoying myself. I'm trying to get moved out of here and get back home to Montana and eventually hope we get there. Okay. That's about it for me. You don't like the politics? No. <laughs> Not at the mind. I love politics. <laughs> yeah. I love politics too. <laughs> Don't but get me started. <laughs> That's one of my soapboxes that I don't care to talk about. Uh, I get very angry with some people sometimes. Okay. All right. And Remember. <laughs> your I, uh, well, like Mike said, we, we've been here for 30 years. I, uh, I worked out in the, in the workforce for a while as I worked at at the Owl Club as a cashier, mm. waiting tables. He was a security guard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all, our whole family started <laughs> at the Owl Club. I got here on, on uh, Labor Day, 1991. I got here at 3 o'clock in the morning, and by 5 o'clock in the afternoon, I went to work at the Owl. Mm. So, yeah. And then I worked for Vera Smith Insurance for a number of years as an insurance agent. And then I decided I was going to be a stay-at-home wife. And uh, mm. after that, I didn't have enough time to work a job. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I've been a stay-at-home wife since 2005. So, um, very active in our church life years ago. Um, mm -hmm. Still active in actively s serving the Lord as, uh, as he has me serve. And so enjoy my time with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so <laughs> that's the show is Coffee with Jesus. Mm -hmm. How did you, how did you come to Christ? Well, you know. Oh, that's a long story. The short version of it is he, um, like I said, he never he never was church much as a child. Mm -hmm. He didn't go very often. Um, when we were short, first married, 
uh, of course, I had I was a churchgoer, and I took my kids quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And my husband drove truck for Black Hills Trucking in mm -hmm. North Dakota for a while. And our son Chancy was probably five at the time, four four and a half five years old. Mm -hmm. And Mike would be gone for long periods of time, and then he would come home, and and uh, the whole dynamic of the house would change because he'd been gone, you know, and I'd been solely in charge and then he'd come home and he'd be in charge. Anyway, he came home one day. The boys had been waiting all afternoon to get their cartoons because I'd been watching my soap opera. And they just sat down to watch their cartoons and Dad come in and said, Chancy, you gonna take my boots off? And Chancy <laughs> turned around and said, when are you gonna learn how to take your own boots off, Dad? And Mike says, well, that wasn't very nice. What would Jesus have said? And he said, how would you know? You don't know him anyway. <laughs> and that evening, Mike said, I think maybe I need to start looking. And that started him off. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Something From like a, that, yeah. <laughs> From a child. From a child. From a child. Out of the mouths From of the babes. From the mouths of babes. That's different. <laughs> Usually it's like... <laughs> kind of a true story. You know? But it's still, you know, I still don't read the Bible much. I don't talk to the Lord like I probably should. But I understand a lot of the Bible. And there's, honestly, there's a lot of things that I don't understand. But only because I believe because I really don't take the time to really study it like I should. Well, and there's some things we're not going to know this side of heaven anyway. That's true. And some things I don't need to know. I know the Lord. Yeah. I trust Him. I live, of it. I live daily on a kind of a faith thing. You know, I have faith in God. It's just like with this Corval, this flu bug that's going around. I never got excited about it. I have faith. My God is bigger than any flu that ever hit this world. Mm -hmm. I am going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And that's been my attitude all the way through it. And I don't know, sometimes I get upset with people when they look at you funny because you're not wearing a mask or they step away from you and I say to myself, I've never said it out loud to anybody. Are you about to? It's <laughs> like... Uh, <laughs> I go, oh, ye of little faith, you know? You just said it. You just said it. <laughs> I just said it. Out loud. <laughs> to, to the community. <laughs> That's fine. I don't care. <laughs> uh, it's true, you yeah, know? Yeah. So that's kind of where I am with everything. I can't wait to go. <laughs> to go home? <laughs> yeah. You know, my mom had that same attitude. She went home two years ago. Maybe it's a season, I don't know. But she, yeah, but she, for many years, had said, you know, she was totally fine with whenever the Lord took her because mm -hmm. her bags were packed and she was ready to go. And she got a, she got a cancer diagnosis in December, and she was gone the 1st of February. And um, the Lord gave me a vision morning that she passed away uh, I wasn't in the room at this time but I, I stepped into the room just moments after she passed mm -hmm. and there was a vision above her bed of her running into the garden as a little girl with her arms wide open mm -hmm. and the Lord picking her up and grabbing hold of her mm -hmm. I mean she was she was she was 80 years old but she was like a little girl running mm -hmm. And he picked her up and hugged her to him and then set her down and then she went down a row of people just hugging necks of all the people that she was waiting for. Mm -hmm. And that was her attitude in life. And, you know, we, we both have always said uh, to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. So I'm, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but in the meantime, I got a lot of grandkids and great grandkids I want to see raised up. Yeah. And I want to see this world a good place for them to be raised in. Yeah. Yeah, I feel the same way. You know, the Lord gave Moses 120 years, and when he did, he gave all of us 120 years. There's no reason why we can't live to be 120 years old if you want to. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of people I talk to say they're not, don't even want to be around 120 years old. 
We're going for 120. But as long as I can keep my faculties about me, you know, and all of that, I don't have a problem with it. But I don't want to be a burden on anybody. So if I get that way, I'm ready to go home too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, I got brothers and sisters up there waiting for me that I never knew, <laughs> and I want to meet them someday. <laughs> How did you come to Christ? Well, I I actually went to church a lot when I was a child. Uh, I liked going to church. I had and I had some really good uh, foundation. We attended the uh, Lutheran Church in Deer Lodge for many years. But um, and I always have known that Jesus was Lord. I've never I've never questioned that as a oh, child or, or an adult. Um, I walked away from him a lot when I got to be a, an adult. Um, but when I was, when my baby brother passed away, I lost a brother. Um, he was 27 and a half when he died. I'm four years older, or three years older than him. So I was 30. Uh, just to set the record straight, he wasn't your baby brother. No, but he's my baby brother yeah. because all my brothers were un were younger than me. He's my oldest baby brother. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he committed suicide. Mm -hmm. And I went through a season of, of, well, I literally freaked out because somewhere in that church upbringing, somebody told me that if you committed suicide, you were going straight to hell. And I knew my brother wasn't in hell. I was sure that my God would not do that. I was absolutely, positively positive that Leslie was not in hell. So I started looking, and uh, and it wasn't too many. It wasn't too long after that that there was a group of um, of singers came through Dillon, Montana. They called themselves the King's Kids, and they put on a presentation at the. Um, I'm not going to be able to think of it. The Christian, what was it called? One of the churches there in Dillon, anyway. And I went with my mother and my aunt, Sharon, and uh, Shirley Tucker. And these kids put on a, per oh, man, what a performance. They were part of YWAM. They'd come out of Colorado. And uh, they put on a tremendous uh, program between music and drama. And somewhere along the line, they did an altar call, and I didn't know what I was doing or why, but I just had to be at that altar, and I was there, and I was on the floor, and I was bawling. And everybody was clapping me on the back and telling me what a good thing I had done and whatnot, but I didn't understand what I did. And I didn't, I, I, they weren't making, it wasn't making any sense to me, really. And so, a few years later, there was a, a preacher that, that would come through the, the wisdom area. And I was at a real low p part in my life, and I was, really, I was really upset and angry about a lot of things. And I told my mom, I need to talk to that pastor. So he came over one night. Mike was home. And, uh, and I asked him, I said, how do you know? How do you know that you're saved? He said, well... You ask the Lord into your heart, and and you know, accept His free gift. You repent of all that you've done, and just ask Him into your heart, and you are saved. I said, "Well, I really feel like I've always known the Lord. I've never questioned Him." I said, "But I just don't know that I'm saved." And he said, "Well, then what you need is a memorial stone, as the." Um, Jewish, the Israeli people did, they would make a memorial stone and this is what, where this happened and this is where this happened. And he said, you need a spot that says, okay, on this day, March 26, 1987, in my living room in Wisdom, Montana, I knelt and accepted the Lord. And brother, I am saved and Satan, get behind me, I am saved. And that's that became my my stone 
And then from there it was like I could not read the, enough of the scripture. I read the Bible every year in a different in a different translation every year and studied it for a long time. Mm -hmm. I went through classes and stuff and and I, I just couldn't get enough of it. Um, I've gotten lazy in my old age. I don't read it as much, but I still love to read it in different versions. I'm really enjoying the Passion version now. Mm -hmm. So they didn't fully translate that. Not it's yet. not yet from Psalms up. Yeah, they, they have Psalms, Proverbs, Song of Solomon, and all of the New Testament is done. Mm -hmm. I have that all in one book, but the Old Testament won't be out fully until they said ten, uh, 2025. Mm -hmm. He should be done with it in 2025. But it is, it uh, it puts so much difference. It, it just brings it really alive to me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It's how we speak today, right? Mm -hmm. Well, and it's, it's the passion of God. He's translating it. The, the words that he's translating, he's gone back to the Hebrew scholars and the, mm -hmm. and the um, aromatic ones and, and, learned what what words will translate and he's taken those that ha show the most passion of the Lord mm -hmm. and when you read it it is just it's tremendous I've also heard the the author speak at Bethel and and uh, Brian Simmons is just a wonderful teacher uh, in, an, in his own right uh, and he can preach the word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is good. He's rewriting it. Yeah, he's <laughs> rewriting it. Yeah. Well, so he's good. Contemporizing. Yeah, it. he's contemporizing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But oh my gosh, it's so good. So mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, that was that was my trip. Um, unfortunately, my children saw uh, were raised up several years with with uh, unsaved parents. You know, we didn't we didn't teach like we should have at home. Mm -hmm. But. Um, and, and when we did make some changes, it was a little hard on them. Uh, but I think they lived through it. We raised some pretty good kids all. So what would be your interpretation or um, explanation of, you said, what it means to be saved, but as far as not saved by works, how would you explain that? It's by grace we're saved and not of ourselves. It was a gift from the Lord. There, that's the only way um, that you can be saved. Once you are saved, then y works are important, mm -hmm. and the works of the Lord are very important. But your, if you don't do anything more than accept the Lord, you're mm -hmm. still saved as, as far as, you know, if you've got a relationship with the Lord. If you firmly have committed yourself to the Lord, you don't have to do another thing, mm -hmm. but you're going to want to. You're going to mm -hmm. want to work for Him. You're going to want to do the things that He mm -hmm. He sets up for you to do, to mm -hmm. accomplish. So it's not a, it's not a, I get to heaven because I did this. Mm -hmm. It's, I, I'm getting to go to heaven, so I want to do this for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like there's like so many interpretations of, mm -hmm. you know, um, I'm saved because I do good things. Right. Saved by grace and walk in faith. That's me. I mean, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm not perfect. And Don't get me wrong. Yeah. There, you know. With us, basically, Mike and I have just tried very hard um, to be an open home. Mm -hmm. If people need help, mm -hmm. we're here. They know that they can rely on us. Mm -hmm. um, if it's within my power to help someone, I will. If it's just to listen, mm -hmm. I will. Um, we don't have a lot of money. We never have had a lot of money. But, you know, we've, we've tried to sow into things that, that were mm -hmm. for the Lord and, and did... Um, give him honor um, but ba basically we just like loving on people mm -hmm. you know 
we're huggers in this house. Yeah. If you don't like yeah. hugging, you probably shouldn't come to our house. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, like I was telling you outside a while ago, that back hole out there was bought simply to help people. You know, that was my my thing that I was going to do for the Lord, and I did help a lot of people with it. He still does. And, and never charged them a lot of money. Like I was saying, if they can afford the money, they got a good job, I'll charge them, you know. But if they can't, and they're on a fixed income and old and can't get out and do the work or whatever, mm -hmm. I don't charge anything. Mm -hmm. And I found that most of them, even when I don't, want to give me $20 to fill my fuel tank up, which that tank's not that big, so, mm. you know. Sometimes I'll take it and sometimes I won't. Mm. And I try very yeah. hard not to. Serving the Lord isn't, there isn't a, um, I don't know, there isn't a you must do this type attitude as far as I'm concerned. No. It's what, because he did what he did for me, I want to do things for him. Mm -hmm. That's so, kind of me. You know, he saved my life several times. Yeah. Um, I should have died in February. I could have very easily died in February. I had something happen. Yeah, and one that I could have last. This February? Mm hmm Yeah. And last the July, Lord covered August. me. He gave, and he, he worked things out, so I went to the right doctor, the right place, the right time. Mm -hmm. Everything was, you know, he, he's he been so faithful to me, like I said, he's more faithful to me than I am to him, yeah. truthfully. I woke up one morning here, what was it, August? Mm -hmm. July, July, August? July, July. Mm -hmm. And I did not feel good. Mm -hmm. And I come that close to picking up the phone and calling the boss and telling him I wasn't going to be there. But mm -hmm. for some reason, I didn't do that. I was raised that if you can move, you can work, you know. I went to work. Well, the guy's on the bus looking at me and talking to me, you feeling all right? I said, I'll be all right, I'm just a little tired. By the time I got out there and went through, we sat down at the line out, and one of the guys got up and told the boss said, you know, I wasn't doing too well, and he'd been watching me pretty close. And he'd come over and look at me, and he said, you, you need to go to town to the doctor. And I said, well, I'll be all right. He said, no, you're going to town. So they sent me into town with two paramet or EMTs. No, they weren't EMTs. They were First responders. medics, anyway. Medics. I don't know. First responders. There we go. And uh, they took me in, and I got into the hospital, and the doctor come in, checked me out, and said, so how did you get in here? I said, I walked. <coughs> and I don't think he believed me, because the two first responders had to verify it. But anyway, they pumped some blood into me, and sent me to Salt Lake. And what had happened is I had what they called a GI bleed. One of my major blood veins in my stomach had, or just outside of my stomach, had worked its way into my stomach, and I was bleeding to death on the inside. And the doctor told me, had you have not went to work and just called in and went back to bed, you wouldn't have woke up. Mm -hmm. I was in Montana with my dad. So I didn't even know what's going on until Dusty called me. Yeah. I had to meet him in Salt Lake City. And they flew me on. there. So, you know, it's there again. It's the Lord working. Because if I'd had my way, I'd have went to work. But I didn't have my way. <laughs> and it was a good thing, really, because you I slept permanently. Because <laughs> the job I was doing, I could have hurt somebody else. Right. You know, at the time I wasn't thinking that way because I wasn't thinking straight anyway. They ended mm -hmm. up putting what five? No, they, they had done two two deals of blood here, and they did six more and two platelets at um, Salt, Lake. Salt Lake City before they got him stable. 
they, they had board. to go in and cauterize it with a little camera and tool thing. Yeah, a little laser. Laser thing. So, yeah. Yeah, it took him a while to come back from that because I was that in took the hospital him down pretty for good. what? Three yes. days? Three days, and then we brought him home and went back to Montana yeah. to pick up Dad. <laughs> So I guess I would ask one more question for the both of you guys. Um, the people who don't know Jesus, what do you have to say for them? Or what would you say? Honestly, I would say this is something that you seriously need to think about. I would tell them some of the things that happened to me, you know, and maybe some of it will sink in, maybe it won't. I'm not the type of person that's going to walk up to you and say, hey, you need to go see Jesus right now. You're saying that right now. <laughs> that I can't, I can't, yeah, you but know, he's quite, he's yeah, saying I'm yeah, not but. the type of person that can do that, yeah. you know. So I would just talk like I'm talking to you, mm -hmm. you know, or... If they want, if they ask questions, I can answer some of them. Some of them I can't, but if I can't answer them, I know somebody that can. And why would you say, why would you make this so important? Why do you think this is so important? It's so important because it changes your life. It, uh, I used to be an alcoholic. I used to smoke cigarettes like a freight train. You know, it's, uh, Correction, we were drunkards. We weren't alcoholics because we didn't. Go yeah, to the we meetings. didn't go to the meetings. <laughs> Both of us. <laughs> yeah. And we swore up that we wouldn't be alcoholics because we came from alcoholic family. Family. Um, so for me, I would have to tell people, and I do tell people, um, it's important for you to know Jesus. He will change your life. Yeah. And I said, you can, uh, you know, I've, I've said this many times. You can go through life without him. And you might do fine. But that doesn't mean that the day isn't going to come, that you're going to come face to face with him. And, you know, at that time, might be too late. Mm -hmm. So, it is, it's, it's life changing. Nobody knows what's the time. It's life changing. What's the difference between religion and Jesus? Because a lot of people Jesus, think they're the same thing. Jesus, to me, is a relationship. It's not a relation. Yeah. Uh, a, a religion. Religion. I can be religion, religious about wearing cowboy boots and, and Levi's and hats. How much money I got in my wallet. I can That's be religious religion. about, you know, leaving the to house. To me, it's, a, it's a relationship, a friendship, if you will. Right. Mm -hmm. You know. That's a good way to put it. With, yeah. with Jesus, yes. It's yeah. like... If you, if nothing else, set him down in the chair next to you, and and just talk to him, because he that's that's the kind of relationship it should be. Mm -hmm. You should be able to tell him anything and everything. He already knows it, because he's he's well aware of you know, and he's been there before us. Donna so. tells me that I talk in my sleep, and she doesn't understand the word I'm saying. He's always talking to the Lord. He'll tell you he doesn't talk. The Lord. I know that's probably what it is. And, and maybe I am. I don't know. Yeah. Because I don't remember any of it. You know, I don't remember her even getting out of bed and coming in here or going in the other room, going to sleep or whatever she does. He'll go in and start saying his prayers, and he's talking, you know, saying his prayers, and he'll wake up in the middle of the night, keep right on talking. And it's not at a, it's not at a pitch that I or that I can actually hear the words. It's just that he's talking. So yeah, it's a relationship. I don't, I don't pray as often as I should, mm -hmm. but I talk to the Lord all day long as I'm doing my work. And That's what I've things. been doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. I do that out here, mess around with my trailers, and I'm just tinkering. You know, I'm puttering right now, mm -hmm. trying to get things going. You know, so I can get out of here. But I won't say I'm getting in a big hurry about it because of the heat right now. Mm -hmm. And I don't like working in the dirt. Mm -hmm. And I told Donna, when we get to Montana, our first house, I'm going to build a shop. <laughs> and if we have to put that camper inside the shop to live for the first year of winter, why, that's fine. That's what we'll do. 
I ain't going through any more like, life without I like a your explanations for things. <laughs> I'm going to put peanut butter on this bread. I'm going to layer it over with some jelly. I'm going to put another piece of bread on it. I'm going to cut it in half diagonally, not across. <laughs> and I'm going to hand you one. You're going to eat one. And we're going to have a good day. And yeah. you missed a step because he's got to put butter on the bread before he puts the peanut butter oh, on yeah. it. <laughs> I don't eat nothing without butter. Real butter. I don't eat nothing without butter. <laughs> yeah, real butter. I don't use margarine. Margarine is like two molecules away from plastic. One. <laughs> One molecule. Yeah, I don't, I don't eat margarine. I eat real butter. I guess I guess we can end on that. Huh? Okay. All right. It sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for tuning in. It was a uh, nice meeting. Donna. Donna. There's another person named Donna uh-huh. as well that I know. You probably know her. Donna Coleman. Mm-hmm. Yep. Very good dear dear friend. <laughs> and, and Mike. Mike. Yeah. Short yep. for Michael, right? Michael. Yep. That was fun. <laughs> Call me anything but late for supper as long as you're smiling when you say it. sound like my uncle. He says the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to need to get like, to actually sit down and visit with you. Yeah. He said, call me late for dinner. Call me late or something, but don't call me late for dinner or something like that. <laughs> you can call me late for dinner, but don't. What is? How is it you say it? Huh? You can call me anything but late for supper. Yeah, he doesn't want you to call him late for he supper. He uses dinner. So. <laughs> and he, the other thing he'll tell you is, if you ask, ask him how he's doing. How are you doing? Well, I'm firing frog hairs split 47 ways. Frog hairs flipped 47 ways? Yeah. He's better, yeah, he's That's finer fine. than a frog hair split 47 ways. Uh, frog, frogs have hair? <laughs> He's the first one that's ever said that. <laughs> you know what? I never questioned it myself. <laughs> pretty fine, isn't it? <laughs> that's pretty funny. <laughs> I had a, I had a, I had a, a log and boss one.